You know, we gotta come up with a name for this thing. I think my name for it is gonna be Baby Got Bunks, because it is long, it's strong, it's down to get the camping on. It is the 33 RBTS J Flight. And it's funny because that model number, it sounds like maybe a rear bath or something. This is a, it's its really, in a sense, a, a flat deck fifth wheel. Like there are fifth wheels with layouts like this. You just don't usually see that kind of concept in a, uh, well, conventionally constructed, what people call stick and tin camper. It's 9,075 pounds. It is long. I do not feel this is a good fit for half tons. I want to get that out of the way and I'd rather put your safety before the sale here at, uh, here at our store. But uh, what you're getting on this one, like you're getting an island kitchen and great storage, but you're getting it all, uh, again, all on one convenient flat deck and new for 22, carpetless, baby. In every single Jayco travel trailer and fifth wheel now, they got rid of all the carpet, especially in a model like this where you have a lot of family members kind of coming and going. Keeping this thing kind of easy breezy cleaning is just, uh, is just a godsend, you know? It has a big camp kitchen. It has a private rear room that uh, really, in a sense, it's as much of a second living room as it is a bunkhouse, and I don't think it would be a real hard office conversion. It has a really cool eat-and-go dinette back there that you might have to pull out, but I could actually see somebody just kind of changing the table up and maybe just temporarily uh, removing the upper bunk, converting this into a little office space and using the booth, in a sense, as a desk. Uh, or maybe you could kind of convert it over into like filing drawer systems or something. I don't know. I'm just saying there's a lot of opportunity for this one, but in its default form, it just straight rocks for families. Again, you're, I, I feel very confident you're going to want a three quarter ton truck or bigger to get her hauled around, but we've got taller ceilings. We've got uh, a good entertainment center, shockingly good kitchen. A lot of times when you start getting a kitchen slide, it doesn't work so well, but because they have so much length to work with, they found some really awesome creative ways to make the kitchen crank on this one. And something that is almost never found in stick and tin trailers, a true queen bed. And guys, you have an option for a king in these. And I tell you, it's nice to see this one again. It's actually been, geez, I think it's been two or three seasons since I had the opportunity to record this one. Uh, so there's been a lot of updates since our uh, our last video on one of these. I'm, I think we're way overdue in getting you some update footage. So as we go, give us some feedback. Leave us some comments. Let me know what you like about it. Uh, you know, what you'd want to see change. Tell me the good, the bad, with the ugly, with everything in between. Today we're looking at the cottage decor, by the way, which is just that kind of rich, warm, brown on brown. Although it does have sort of a, a peanut buttery kind of creaminess to it. It's it's not really dark and oppressive. I think having these opposing slides in that island opening everything up really, really helps. What also helps is a good lighting package and a taller ceiling. All of these J flights, all your tandem axle J flights are six foot nine tall. And you will see that all the windows in the slide, well, they all open for airflow, which is great. But one of, I think my favorite things is not just the cosmetic updates, but stuff like this getting rid of all of the carpet in the slide flooring even in the bunk room they did that they made this like so easy to maintain so easy to keep clean i really am i'm just i'm really happy with what they did there now what we're looking at right here is uh, one of the optional upgrades standard this would have a jackknife sofa you can get a hide -a bed but with this having a uh, uh a private sleep and bunk room i figured it had enough space and I kind of figured people would like that theater seat because it's right next to the TV. When the, you saw when the legs kick open, it doesn't like block everything off as someone's taking a nap midday. But Jayco has, I think, some kind of patent on this. Those little wing out side stands. I call them the cupception swivel stands because they actually slot right into those cup holders, which is cool because their theater seat includes uh, an extra set of uh, cup holders in the middle with little hidden remote control storage in that uh, armrest console, by the way. Nice little pro tip for you there to keep them from getting lost, you know. You try to leave a uh, remote control just on the cushions while you're uh, traveling, and they'll fall off the, uh, the the couch and find a way to like get under the slide before it goes out. And the way the entertainment is set up on this one is great. It's just, it's at a, uh, a perfect little angle here where you don't have to crank your neck around if you're sitting at the theater seat, if you're over here at the dinette. Even the people in the kitchen can still kind of have a look at this thing. That's one of the things I really like about it. The entertainment isn't crappy on this one. It's also interesting behind the entertainment center is the bathroom. This has a forward bathroom with a shower, not a rear bathroom with a tub, which is one of the major difference qualities on here. We've added the uh, electric space heat and fireplace down there, although 
I'm not going to call it a Tootsie Toaster because we're so close to the theater seat. That's either a footsie fryer or, depending on the condition of your feet, um, a bunion burner. <laughs> what uh, this one does really well, though, again, like I said, shockingly well, the storage in the kitchen's great. But I, I really like how they didn't waste any little opportunities for anything like uh, a place to hang some coats or a dog leash or something right by the door. Got the triple uh, one, two, three Drunken Octopus Fight Club hidden away in there. And if we know anything about Drunken Octopus Fight Club, we don't talk about Drunken Octopus Fight Club. But I do like to talk about that handy dandy clutter cut and shoe garage right by the door. Now, I, I'm not, uh, I said that as we're looking under the oven. I don't mean that's the shoe garage, obviously. I mean, <laughs> I guess, I don't know, you could use it as a shoe garage. You know what else? I think that could maybe make a decent little pet dish spot. Any other pet campers out there? I know a lot of people dog camp. I've been very, like my eyes have been open this last season or so, talking to all the people who are cat campers. So let me know what kind of pets you camp with, or do you have any exotic, like do you have birds, iguanas, or some kind of crazy exotic pet? I'd love to know that kind of stuff. It's just fascinating to me. Now over here, we've got the optional larger 12 volt DC compressor fridge. That is completely travel safe. Uh, you know, bigger capacity. You got a big family packed into this thing. You need all the feeding frenzy capacity you can get. I opened half the doors over here on that uh, that rear sort of wall, but that whole thing is storage. And with the RV being taller, they could throw shelving in there. And something I'd like you to kind of note is like there's, there's a lot of outlets in here. Like there's outlets right there. There's outlets right here on the face of the island. There's an outlet to the right of the stove top. You can kind of see it coming in play right there. They give you a lot of places to uh, put things. And I have to ask, would that be a coffee bar back there? A drink mixer station? Or uh, <laughs> would it be like coffee down below and, and drinks above? So you can have your coffee and your Baileys all at the same time. Because, you know, we're camping. And you can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning, right? <laughs> My uncle Gary taught me that. But we're only like half done with the kitchen. Uh, the kitchen, by the way, has uh, nice sealed edge press membrane countertops here, which is kind of cool. I like the little dish drying rack that they include with that. But a great pantry space built right into the slide. And that's one of the things I like about this one. Well, when we go outside, we'll talk about this. The kitchen slide, it takes up a little bit of awning space. But the floor space it gives us inside by putting the, the pantry, the fridge, the microwave, and the oven, the four largest, bulkiest kitchen fixtures, by getting them off the floor plan, look at the way it, it just opens this thing up. And it, it, would, it would actually look even larger if I didn't have it blown up like a bomb went off right now. But I don't want to miss a thing Steven Tyler style. Although, um, I'm not the kind of guy who's going to stay awake just to uh, watch you breathe. That is, Mr. Tyler, that is a that that is a way creepier line than I think people give it credit for. <laughs> Storage below that dinette, and remember, we are carpetless. That table's free floating, so you can pivot that around. You can take it outside. You can get it out of here. That could be, uh, even though we're going to go back in the bunk room in a minute, or second living room, or whatever you want to call it, the flex use do it all Swiss Army room. That, if you put a little blocker in the front of that, could be a nice little pack and play if you got a little. That's one of the other nice things about this camper. It's so large. It works. Like, if, if you've just got one or two kids, it's going to work fine. But if you got a bunch of people, this thing is excellent. And it is just, it's a rainy day, just godsend in here for a couple reasons. Like, we've got that, I, I, I call these the eat and go dinette, where if, if we got to feed a whole big family, everybody can, can have a place to sit down. Like, or on a rainy day, you got a little coloring book station in there. Uh, you, you've got your handy little, uh, you know, entertainment center over here in the bunk room. If you, you know, allow the kids to bring something to plug into that or you supply for them, as it were. But this is what's really cool. It's a full-size camp kitchen, but it's a quad bunkhouse. It's four separate sleeping spaces, which is incredibly difficult to find. Usually, when you get a full-size camp kitchen, you only get three beds or you get some of those little converter cube jobs. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like the J-Flight 32 foot uh, double slide bunkhouse has that. This though, that extra thing, it makes all the difference. Now, obviously uh, you, that's a, well, I don't know how obvious it was. That's a 300 pound rated bed that can fold down. You can see that the dinette can fold down there. And that's a dinette just like in the living room. Uh, it's it's not quite as wide, but it, it's got all the same, uh, you know, storage below it, which 
Speaking of which, take a look at the storage in this thing. There's not bad storage in this bunk room, but one of the areas that I really like is the dresser space under that extra little bonus bunk. And then all the way up this wall, this is like, this is sharing the space with the pantry wall. It's just tons of dresser space for the kiddos. There's not a lot of hanging storage in here, but I think most people who camp agree, you, you need more folded t-shirts and folded swimming trunks than you need hanging storage. That's all of our kitchen pantry space, basically. Well, that that the coffee or liqueur bar uh, over there, as it were. Notice, too, upper, lower bunks. Everybody has their own nice little light. And this has the move bunk. Get out the way. This handy little spring-loaded job, which I'm going to try to do this one-handed in real time. When you're ready to flip the bunk up, that's all it takes. And, guys, I got chicken arms. If I can... So can you. I, I feel very confident of that. All those bunks, by the way, are 300 pound rated in these. Um, that skylight up top, I think that's something that used to be optional that's finally just rolled into the standards because pretty much everybody and their brother ordered it. Although it is nice that Jayco includes the little privacy shade for that. And we've mostly already killed the living space. I just kind of want to give you a, a once more Passover, point out a couple details, like that you got the slide side breeze windows there, but uh, again, so that we, you can see we have shades all the way around. I cracked open that window just to give me some airflow. Bit of a warm day. Um, if I'm going to be picky, what's, like, where is this RV falling short for us a little bit? Because it's, it, there's a lot that it does right, but I want to be fair. So this thing is beast mode. It is, it's a big thing, but... Sometimes your greatest asset is also your greatest liability. It is not short. It is not light. I, I talked about this right away outside because I, I know, if you appreciate the fact that we open with the fact that no, this ain't half ton total, which immediately uh, disqualifies the largest potential pool of buyers out there, that we're willing to put that right out there, at the very least, hit that like button if you haven't done so. If that doesn't earn us a subscriber or whatnot, you know, let me know what we need to do. But uh, also being fair, you know, it, it is long. It is something you need to really plan accordingly. It's too big for many sites. And it is definitely lacking on door side windows. But we have ways around that here at Haylet RV. We have floor plans from Whitehawk, Heritage Glen, Cougar, uh, Freedom Express, all of which make just tons uh, or floor plans like where it's almost a flip-flop version of this floor plane that puts a super slide over here on this side. Now they have to get creative and do some other things with that to make that happen. But uh, there, we have all kinds of different things. That's that's one of the nice things about working with us at Halo RV. If those are deal breaker factors for you, let us know. We've got other options. Like, let me know. Like, hey Josh, what else you got to put some windows on the door side? I'll try to leave you some links in the video description. Uh, if I fail to do that, let me know in the comments and I'll send you some links there. Um, or if you're like, I really like this layout, but I wish, like, does it have Asdell? Do you have, do they make an Asdell one? Freedom Express makes this basically exact same floor plan and a nice uh, Asdell laminated ultralight, still carpetless, still taller. It's probably going to run a, a little bit more as a result of the material swap, but we've got options upside down, inside out here. So I don't mind acknowledging where this one struggles sometimes because we have other things that can make up for those. Now they're going to have their own points of concern too. And that's why we try to present fair information in every one of our videos for you. Now, along with that discussion of being fair and giving you good info, this is one of those bathrooms that if I was a little cutthroaty, there's a little thing here that I think concerns a lot of people uh, that, that could easily be missed. Like you look at this and it looks great. But I will go ahead and acknowledge head on the fact that you do have that heat duct in the floor right next to the toilet there. I know a lot of people really do not appreciate that. There's decent leg room around it and whatnot. There's actually, because this all curls in behind the entertainment center, it's surprisingly big. You may have also noticed uh, uh, an obvious decor shift. The bathroom will always be farmhouse. The bedroom will always be cottage. It's the rest of the RV that kind of changes uh, a little bit. Now, um, taller ceiling that we mentioned, I'm about 6'3-ish standing in there, you know, between shoes and hat and everything, means taller shower, which is nice. And these clear shower doors, there's an indoor rain -X treatment you can hit them with to make sure they don't get nasty and streaky. Uh, or, guys, just a very simple, inexpensive squeegee really, really does the trick very well. And it looks funny, but the uh, toilet paper holder mounted on the door, it actually closes to like just the most convenient, perfect location right there. Now, sliding forward into the bedroom, nice privacy door, you know, not like a curtain or anything, not a slider, like a real door like you have in the house. TV hookups across from the master bed, if you're so inclined. Like, I don't know about you guys, but like, 
Um, my wife and I, we had to, we, we realized that like, we, we just weren't spending enough time with one another and we, we didn't want to like, you know, lose a connection or anything. So every single night, uh, basically we each take turns on if we're watching a series or a show. And literally that's some of the reason I'll sometimes say, Hey guys, what series are you watching on Netflix? Cause I'm looking for something cool for my next turn to watch. So I don't forfeit my turn. <laughs> We try not to watch something the other person really doesn't like, but every now and then we both say, well, I, I don't know about you. I, I know that I'm really going to like this. Now, something I really like, and, I, and I'm willing to bet you will too, that is not a shorty pants camp queen. That is a 60 by 80 true queen. You might also notice it's a little less obvious because the bedspread's kind of fluffed over here, but you see how much room is over here. These side cabinets are standardized so that if you want to, you can upgrade to a 70 by 80 king in here and uh, you know still be able to walk around the bed, which is cool. Now, looking below the bed, you may have noticed they've kind of changed things up from the previous year. You got that little double sectionalized area right there. Perfect for dog beds, maybe cat litter boxes, if you're okay with that being in your bedroom, you're camping, there's only so many places it can go, you know? Um, or just general storage totes or whatever. Um, I don't generally personally like the look of cargo netting in an RV, but I also don't know that I love that being wide open down there, but I also acknowledge there's not really a lot of room for cargo to shift. Like, do you like how they did the underbed treatment? Would you like to see that done a little bit differently? Um, just let me know. Also, we are roof solar ready. You have a handy little side prep plug there. Ooh, you get to see my little elbow sticking out. <whistles> Baby, that is a good looking elbow. Look at that thing. Now, uh, displaying our road mode traveling access is not going to take very long because, um, in short, uh, it doesn't really have any. <laughs> you can get in and you can reach the access panel to open the slides. And that's just about all you can really do here. So, um, you know, uh, in terms of things to worry about, I, I think I'm going to refer to the wisdom of Forrest Gump, who said... Well, that's good. One less thing. <laughs> Alright, now outside, I actually wanted to begin here in the pass-through, and specifically on the driver's side of the pass-through, so that you can really get to see it is a full pass-through. They both, uh, both sides have the full-size baggage doors with magnet holdbacks. Now, just kind of drive that point home, and as I'm looking right now, I accidentally left one of those windows open on that slide. It's it's so funny. It's the time of year here in Michigan where you drive to work with your heater on and your teeth are chattering. And then you go home with the windows down and you wish you were wearing shorts. <laughs> it just it shifts like 40 degrees every day right now. Um, coincidentally, it really lines up nicely with the leaves falling, which you know puts a lot of uh, irritants in the air, and everybody ends up sick this time of year. It's terrific. Welcome to Pier, Michigan funny in the pure michigan ads they never talk about that they're like oh come see the leaves they don't tell you that you're gonna need stock and kleenex when you do it <laughs> but enough about me um by the way if you love this thing but you're like, god darn it i wish this had fiberglass instead of that wavy skin they have a fiberglass skin option naturally being the dork that i am i've got a name for it i call them fiber flights baby up front here Notice how their diamond plate actually extends down like to help protect the front uh, chassis, and that is an, uh, a pass-through A-frame kind of chassis here. And notice also, you've got 50% more propane here with 60 pound, nope, well, yeah, 60 pounds of propane, 30 pound tanks. I want to make sure I say that correctly. Another thing on these baggage doors, um, the, uh, the hinges are like sealed and protected. So once again, Midwestern weather here where it gets hot and cold and hot and cold, uh, it, it doesn't cause the... Um, uh, the, the, the water to get in the, the hinges and spring them so they go like screech like the old wooden kitchen door in the farmhouse in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Ever notice the, man, the people who live in those massacre houses, they never take care of their hinges. You know, maybe they'd be in a better mood if they weren't constantly being annoyed by the screeching. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> enough about that. The J-Port. We're going to hard pivot. Um, this is a two-inch receiver hitch off the side of the trailer. And it can be used, there's little picnic table mounts, there's um, uh, trash cans, there's all kinds of things. And it can also be used to mount the uh, optional black stone griddle, which comes with the handy little extension arm and platform table that you saw right there. So it seems kind of weird. And, I, and, and 
I'm not actually trying to justify this. I like I'm explaining sort of why they did it. I'm not even saying that I necessarily agree with it. It seems weird to me that your outside optional cooker is like a football field away from the outside kitchen. But it's because it may not be used constantly for the outside kitchen. I would really like it, I think, if they did have a hookup like on the rear bumper and a swing out mount for that griddle, but they don't. Um, that is the kind of thing that's probably available aftermarket. Uh, so you kind of have to consider that, but I don't believe since they moved that, they have a gas grill quick connect over here, or as I like to call them, the propane cooker hooker any longer. When they did get that cooker situation out of the camp kitchen though, we gained an extra drawer. And I have yet to find somebody who's upset with their camper because it has extra drawer space. That's never the wrong answer. And a full size camp kitchen. Those things are about as rare as frog's hair anymore. I swear, it's like everybody and their brother's gone with a low profile camp kitchen. It's hard to find a big one like that. And if you take notice, even in my height, I can stand under that thing. Although if I jump, I can knock my noggin. I tested that out one time thinking, oh yeah, I've got headroom here, thunk. I about knocked myself out, which would have been hilarious on camera, you know, but I didn't. Now, uh, let's talk safety stuff. How about Goodyear Endurance Radials, standard? How about reverse travel lighting and turn signal safety lighting all the way down the side of the trailer? Rear and side camera prep. That's what's kind of nice about a J-Flight. They're sort of that plus one of stick and tin trailers. Uh, they, If you really look at a full flight, I think a lot of times people uh, incorrectly judge them by the fact that they have that wavy tin skin. If you look at the equipment loadout of this, it actually has so much in common with like a, a laminated White Hawk or even an Eagle HT, it's not even funny. And one of the areas that is very true, but man, you can't see it, is their optional thermal package. All you get to see is an enclosed underbelly. What you don't get to see is the fact that it's heated, the fact that their thermal package also does things like uh, add extra uh, you know, uh, insulating layers into the roof and floor and every single Jayco with a slide has at least a radiant barrier running through the slide floor to help with the efficiency there which is nice like so you're not sitting in the slide sweating but like your feet are freezing you ever you ever have an annoying situation like that where you're like you're wearing shorts but you got to wear slippers and I used to judge people that wore slippers but I, I tell you the older I get the more I get it I hate having cold feet <laughs> and I love the fact that I get to actually get you up here on the roof to look around a little bit because Jayco has done a very good job of making sure their full J flights are continuing to have ladders. Now the SLX little brother to this normally has an optional ladder right now for uh, like shortage reasons. Those haven't been able to have ladders necessarily, but the big guys here, they've tried to make sure that you can get up on these things. Um, wh what's also cool about this is it's sort of like the underbelly, the thermal package. With the Jayco, it's not what you see, it's what you don't see. It's the fact that we're walking on plywood. It's the fact that this roof is rated for 50% more weight than like any of these guys. And they're perfectly walkable, they're snow load rated, but they're not rated to handle the weight of this J-Flight. And just for what it's worth, you might have noticed a little sticker in the bedroom telling us where the um, uh, solar charge controller prep is located. Your prep plug is all the way up there on the nose of this one, but because this is such a long trailer, man, you could flood this thing with solar if you want to get really crazy with it. Um, apologies, by the way, if I seem weirdly distracted there. I had a bee flying all around me and I was trying not to get them like agitated. One of the ways you can do that, here's a handy little camp and pro tip. You can apply this to your everyday life. If there's a bee or something swarming around you, it's gonna sound weird, hold your breath. Uh, they're actually attracted to like the carbon uh, monoxide, dioxide, whatever one it is that we breathe out. That's one of the things that triggers them uh, because, you know, plants, flowers, that's one of the things that's happening there is an exchange of those gases for like oxygen. So they're tuned in to smell that. So if you're breathing out, they might think your face is a flower and come after it. So hold your breath. Don't go, ah, ah, ah. That will, uh, that'll, that'll get them coming after you in a hurry. So again, my name for it was Baby Got Bunks. What would you call this thing? Now, the, you can't say Bertha. Uh, every, it's like the default name for every camper, camper is Bertha. I don't know why, especially a big one like this or an old motorhome. Everyone's like, yeah, that's Bertha. What, what is it about like cows or Bessie? You know, what, what is, why are so many campers named Bertha? Regardless, give me a name for this thing. Um, also, give me some feedback. Let me know what are your favorite points. What are the points that you'd like to see change or maybe something I didn't answer for you? I'll leave you a link in the video description. You can check for pricing availability. And if you haven't, 
hit that subscribe button, like our video so you can catch the next one coming out. And as always, guys, we're family owned and operated. We don't do those pesky hidden dealer fees. We'd love to work with you when you're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun. Happy camping, everyone. Man, what a beautiful rig. What a beautiful day. Look at this. Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo.